The next step will be installing your slide tracks onto your glass. So you'll need your brackets, you'll need your spacers and some hardware to attach that. The kit did not come with uh, the quarter inch rivets, so we're using quarter inch screws. These are way too long for this project. So we're gonna put them in, then I'll just cut them off. I didn't have the dimensions when I was at the hardware store. This is also a good time to clean up the glass. We took a very, very, very fine 3M pad and kind of cleaned all the rust off. We scuffed the uh, rear defroster, uh, these two side pieces up just a little bit to get some of the oxidation off, but you can't go wild on this, otherwise you'll destroy the uh, the uh, conductivity of these uh, of these wires that are you know taped onto your glass. But it is a great time to clean everything up. So the first thing you'll do is take one of the spacers, the one with the metal washer. This will go on the outside of the glass or the bottom side of the glass, and you'll snap you'll snap the retaining clip in. <clears throat> you'll do that on both sides. And again, some of you may not be replacing this or you don't want to replace the spacers. Most of the time you shouldn't have to, but if you do, this is how you do it. When installing the track bracket, you want to make sure that the actual slide area is facing down. So we'll set that into place. I'm going to lift this up and put a t-shirt under here to, to ease getting my wrenches under the glass. So I couldn't find the rivets in time, so I got quarter inch screws, quarter inch nuts, and I'm going to screw those down and then cut them off. But, or you could always use quarter inch rivets. <clears throat> so we'll get this in place. Get some tools here and we'll tighten these down. You don't want to crank these down. You don't want, you don't want to start cracking plastic or your glass. So just kind of go easy. And we've got it, we've made contact. It's fairly snug. Again, you may find a different way to fasten these. This is what worked for us. You want to repeat this process for the other side. Again, I took a cutoff tool and just cut the top of the bolts off right here. And when you back these nuts off in the future, it'll just thread that bolt anyway. But try to get the right size or try to get the quarter inch rivets. One quick tip. If you're installing the glass and you are using new slide tracks, you got to remove these before you try to put the glass in so you can just unscrew them and set them aside. The next step will be installing the glass in the tailgate. Ideally, I'd like to have two people. Just make sure that you have the glass the right side up so the contour of the glass matches the contour of your tailgate and that you've got your inner brackets for your slides on the top of the glass facing up. So let's see if we can get this thing slid in here. I'm just gonna slowly push it in until I hit some resistance with those, the tracks, I can feel it. I'm gonna go over here, reach my hand in here and just guide that one corner into the track and it went right in. Same thing on the other side, reach in, make sure it's going in and gently slide the glass down those tracks, just like that. And you wanna stop shy of your new track sliders because we're gonna take the slides, we're gonna install them and manipulate the glass down and then bolt the new track to the slide. So let's get that done right now. Now we're going to install the slide track over the slide. I'm not lubricating this right now, just so you can see what I'm doing and I don't make a mess in here, but you will need to lubricate that afterwards. So take the slide, put it on the pivot point, and then you'll simply manipulate the glass to a point where you can get it down Slide the track over and keep pushing the glass down evenly till it lines up. And just like that, you've got it lined up. Next thing you'll do is put your nuts on. And if you're reusing your tracks, again, guys and gals, clean them, polish them, get them shiny. Don't try to put a rusty or crusty track in there. That's the biggest, uh, biggest form of resistance when the motor's going up and down is that track. And again, the scissoring action of the metal inside the regulator. So I'm gonna tighten these up and then we'll do the other side. The next step, we'll be getting this slide track on the slide. It's gonna be a little bit harder because we have this cross member in the way and now we've got the glass and the regulators all lined up on a horizontal plane. So you can't really manipulate it too well. What you will be able to do is gently flex the glass and move the regulator arm up and down to be able to manipulate this into place. You'll start by placing it face down sliding it over 
getting the slide caught in the track, then pivoting this down without scratching your glass and getting it up in the holes. And then we'll have to bolt it in out of view because it'll be behind this cross member. So let me give this a shot. Slide that in. There, that's in. Pivot that around. We're gonna get this in this mounting hole. That would be right there. I got one in and I've got the second one in. Now I'll grab the bolts and I'll put these on by hand right now and I'll tighten them up off camera. All right, so the next step we're gonna cover is reattaching and reinstalling the rest of the wiring harness. So if you are reusing your factory motor, you don't really have to worry about this problem so much, but in our case, we put a new motor in and it became a notable problem. So the wiring harness that was already installed that runs underneath the motor regulator was just a little too short to reconnect to the original harness from the lock switch. Because of that, we had to extend the wire out to make sure that when the glass comes all the way down that it doesn't pinch the wire at the very bottom. Now, again, this should go underneath the regulator all the way down to the bottom and then it'll go around in a little bit of a loop up to these two holes right here to be mounted in place. And the reason it does that is again to make sure that the glass can go all the way down without pinching it. You don't want to do this wrong because it's very hard to get the glass to come back up once the wires are ripped. So to reinstall it, we are going to reuse the factory piece that is on this harness end because it was in decent shape. On this end, because it didn't have one or it broke off, I can't quite remember which, we're going to use another one of these to reattach it underneath right here. So because of how difficult this can be to do upside down where you can't really see it very well, the best thing I can suggest is to unplug the or to plug this in first underneath here, pop the one in and then work on the second one after that so you can make sure that it's out of the way. So I'm going to do that now. When you run this under, that rod that goes straight down to the bottom with a 90 degree angle at the bottom of it, you have to make sure that the wire is run on this side of it. If it runs on the other side of it, you will pinch the wire at some point. So just be careful for that. So I'm going to connect the wires now. I'm going to install the one clip there. Like that. I'm going to take one of these, loosely thread it around. Take it. it up in and then tighten the zip tie once the wire is routed all the way down and out of the way like that now I'm going to trim off the excess like that throw that away now on this side of that same harness I'm gonna have to put another one of these over here to make sure that the wires stay up and away from the glass as it slides up and down. Now, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Push it up like that. I'm gonna make sure that the wire is nice and tight so it's not gonna be hanging down and get caught. Tighten it up. And we're gonna trim the excess like that. The final step for the wiring harness is going to be the rear window defrost wires. Now, not all models have this, so if yours doesn't, you can kind of skip forward. Now, the factory bracket has three mounting holes for this. The aftermarket brackets that we have only have two, but two will be more than sufficient. Now, our harness, one of these was already broken from removal. It was in pretty bad shape. 
and one of them survived. So we're going to reuse the one. So I'm going to loop it around and just leave it on there loose for now. Now, when you install these clips, there is a little depression button right there. You want to make sure that those are facing you when you put those in, because if you ever have to remove them, it's going to be really hard to do so if you don't. So I'm going to install them respectively on their each side. All of our connections have already been covered in dielectric grease to prevent corrosion. All right, just like that. And now I'm going to take, reinstall the push clip like that and line this one up like that. Pull the tie and trim off our excess. Now, this harness right here will be free floating the rest of the way. It's not going to get tied up any further because as the glass goes up and down, this has to be able to move with the glass. So that's something you want to make sure of. Now, one more step before you go and uh, click forward, you want to make sure that you want to trim any of these that are too long. So the factory one you can see only sticks up about a quarter of an inch. Some of these aftermarket ones are quite a bit longer as you can tell. So we're going to trim those down that way they're not sticking up five miles. You don't want it to interfere with your cover that goes back over top. Do it again on this one. And that's it. The next step we'll be installing our tailgate cables. The old bolts get a little crusty. We were able to source new bolts, but we were not able to source spacers. So when you assemble these, <clears throat> your bolt is gonna go through here. You're gonna put this washer on here and that allows this to pivot after you tighten things up. The problem is these get pretty, these get pretty corroded and dirty. So we're gonna clean these up real quick on some really fine steel wool. You might as well clean this stuff up if you're going to the expense of rebuilding your tailgate. So it's just a matter of rotating this on here and scraping it. Give it a once over here. Yeah, there's still some corrosion on there. And again, it makes it look nicer, keeps some grime and corrosion out of your tailgate, and it only takes a minute or two to, to clean this up. Let's see. That's looking pretty good. And we'll clean the inside of it out. Now you've got a nice clean washer. So we'll install this just like that. We'll put this washer on and then bolt it to our tailgate. Next, we're going to attach the passenger side tailgate cable. You're going to take your new bolt and put it through the cable eyelet. You're going to put on that washer or spacer that we just cleaned up. Put it inside the threaded hole and start it. Start it with your fingers so you don't strip anything out. This one takes a number three Phillips screw, screw gun to put in. So we're going to drive that in. Nice and tight, and this cable, as you can see, will still pivot, but it's still secure. Next thing you want to do is get our cable strap. You'll take this plastic tailgate guide, push it in the hole. You'll want this facing down to the bottom of the tailgate, and just gently tap in the pin to secure the bracket back into the tailgate, like that. You'll take your clip, and that's it. All right, in our next step, we're going to be installing the front and rear window felts. But before we do that, we have to get the glass to go all the way back into the tailgate. Now, if you are working on the tailgate and it's still attached to your truck or is at least close enough that you can plug in your harness, you can easily just run the glass in and out with the switch located on the dash or the column. In our case, we're working on it in the shop, so we're going to use a jumper wire with a 18 volt or 12 volt battery source. So if you're doing it that way, the two wires on this harness that you need to worry about are the two purple wires, and they are going to be at 180 degrees from each other. So in this plug, it's going to be the one that's on the flat side and the one 180 degrees of opposite of it. And so you're just gonna give it some power, run it all the way in. If you're using an 18 volt source, be careful. It can go a little fast and you don't wanna to go too far in the wrong direction. And it can 
be a little concerning at first. So get my leads plugged in here. And we're going to actuate it like this. Oh, got it right on the first try. And it's all the way in. Now we can start working on the felt. We're nearing the end of our tailgate build. Right now we're gonna be putting in the inner and outer seals and the two corner seals. I put some green tape down to protect the paint because these metal clips, they're very similar to your door felts. They're sharp. We don't wanna scratch the paint as we're installing this in the tailgate. So I'm gonna have Jesse lift the glass up with his fingers. Go ahead, Jesse. And then I'm gonna start on this end and then work these clips in the holes that are already in the tailgate. Let's line these up as best I can. And that's the outer seal. Next, we're going to do the inner felt, and we're going to apply it the same way, but this time we're going to stand the tailgate up because we get easier access to the holes. So Jesse's gonna stand the tailgate up for me. We've reached the final step of the video. I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, these are the corner seals for the tailgate. We've already done the passenger side. Now we're gonna do the driver side. We're gonna do this one on camera. These are notoriously difficult to install. You need to get this rubber lip under the metal lip of the tailgate while sliding this in and making sure this rubber seal rides this edge of the tailgate. So if you install it and that's tucked down, you can just get a, a tool and pull that rubber seal out. You don't have to remove it each time. So let me give this a shot. I've got the seal on the outside of the tailgate. We've got it caught on the inside. Now it's just a matter of putting our Phillips screw into the tailgate and there's a pre-drilled hole in this tailgate. So we'll get this in. <laughs> and that does it. Thanks for making it this far into the video. I know a lot of people tune out before they get to the end. We had a good time making this. I hope it helps you rebuild your tailgate. And I do apologize for the delay between part one and part two. We had a lot of things going on, a lot of things to get set up to get this done right. I want to thank Jeff's Bronco Graveyard for uh, supplying the parts to us. We were able to buy everything we needed from them in a timely manner, and the customer service was fantastic. I don't want this to sound like a commercial, but they really did do a good job helping us out. I'd also like to thank Jesse for helping me out in this video. We kind of rotated back and forth between working the camera and working the tools. Um, you have anything to say, Jesse? Yeah, Chris, thanks for bringing me along for this. I really enjoyed hanging out and uh, getting this project done. Um, for you guys at home, before you get into this at home, make sure that you uh, watch the video a few times over. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section down below. Uh, make sure to like the video, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and I look forward to being able to be involved in other videos with you, Chris. Yeah, we've got a lot of projects coming down the pipeline. We're gonna be putting a six inch lift kit on my 1996 Ford Bronco. We're gonna be replacing the door hinge pins, and we've got a couple other projects coming. If you have any projects you'd like to see done, put them in the comment section below or hit us up. My contact information, again, is in the uh, description of the video. But uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> is that bad? <laughs> Did we just end the video staring at each other? <laughs>